Now for this demo, we've learned about brush arc brushes and then the new knife brushes. So we're going to use this, uh, both of those features uh, to kind of give you a little bit of a lightweighting demo. And by lightweighting, what I mean is if I go into my sub tools here, uh, I'm going to hold down shift and turn everything, all the folders off, except for the structure folder. And you're going to see we have these big iron pieces that make up this mechanical animal. And uh, in order to create these, uh, I use knife. I basically use a knife brush and then I used uh, the bevel arc brushes and I used Ziri mesher and then I used the knife brushes with alt held down so I can go through here and create these boolean uh, light weighting things on the side. So let's let's walk through it. Uh, so essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cube that we have in the middle of our scene here. It's just a basic cube, a nice even geometry here. And we're gonna go through and I'm gonna turn on transparency and we're gonna slice through. Let's go ahead and change our material here to Skin Shader 4 so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, again, let's just get our basic shape. Uh, we have X symmetry turned on so it, you know, we're cutting from the side, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, but again, we can go in here, hold down control shift, and then we're gonna choose our knife curve and we're just gonna go through. And I'm gonna keep my cuts pretty sharp. So I'm gonna hold down control shift, pull out, and then I'm gonna alt tap twice and we'll go through and we'll just kind of slice through uh, to get our basic overall shape. So I'll just go through and we'll cut here and then we'll alt tap twice again and then I'll slice through here and I'll slice up. And then, uh, you know what, I'll, I guess I'll go up here and we'll just slice back. So this is our own, this is our shape. Uh, we turn off transparency. It fits, you know, reasonably well within here. If I only need to go through here and be like, eh, you know what, this probably, you know, needs to cut around here. No problem. So here's our new shape. Uh, if I go into solo mode, uh, you're going to see this is our new shape. I'm going to go into uh, BBA, which is our bevel arc brush. And now we're just going to go through here. And again, we have X symmetry turned on, nice big brush. And I'm going to click on one side and then the other. And I'm just going to go and round some of these off. Again, if it's going to, the brush is going to kind of affect other areas. We can hold down Control and Alt. And then we can just kind of mask first just to make sure that we're not inadvertently uh, disrupting any any geo that we don't uh, want to change. So again, we'll go, you know, side to side here and we'll just kind of use this to kind of bevel uh, around some of these areas in here. Again, if we want to do bevel on the inside, we can just hold down Alt, oops, hold down Alt. There we go. And we can kind of pull to a rounded angle in here if we want. And again, you can mask if that's going to make it better as well as once we're done kind of rounding some of these corners out, so we'll go through here and we'll round these out. Remember, you do have polygroups available to you. We have these outside polygroups, and then these are all different polygroups here. So if we want to go in here, select rectangle, hold down Control Shift, select rectangle, Control Shift tap these outside polygroups, Control Shift drag to invert that visibility. Control W make those all one polygroup here. Control Shift tap to bring everything else back. Go in here to deformation, uh, polish by features, just drag that slider. That'll go ahead and you know polish uh, these rings. And if you're getting inconsistent results, remember, it's easy enough to go in here to geometry, zero measure, we'll just say half, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, since the groups are already pretty smooth, uh, depth size down to zero, nice even quads, and then hit zero measure. And that'll go ahead and clean up your geometry. You don't have to do that step. And in fact, if that's too low, you can say same, or you can just, you know, click off of here and say, you know what, just dial in how many thousands of polygons you want. Uh, again, it just gives you a more predictable geometry much much easier to work with in my opinion of course now that i say that i want to continue lightweighting if i go out of solo mode here you're going to see this is a shaped piece of metal but boy it, this is a huge piece of iron that's going to be sitting in there right so we're going to go through and we're going to slice uh some more shapes from the front and the back and the side and in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to hold down control shift and we're going to go right back into our knife curve brush and then from the top we're going to go through here and we're going to, going to alt tap twice and we're just going to cut all this big chunk out and we're going to go uh, so this is from the top you can go from the bottom and you know cut a chunk out from the bottom here and then we can go from the front and the back and we can say you know what you can kind of be take a chunk out and then you know the back we'll go ahead and say you know what? also you can go ahead and get a chunk taken out so now you know this is still structurally sound uh, but can still support a lot of weight, but isn't going to be overly heavy where it doesn't need to be. And again, like we mentioned before, um, BBF is bevel flat, and you can actually go through here and you can clean these up with your bevel flat brush. Uh, in this instance, what I might use is planar brush. Um, another thing too is it is the knife brush is symmetrical. So if you hold down Control Shift and you want to like you know, you know, go from the side here and then Alt Tap twice, it'll cut across symmetry here. However, when you cut across the symmetry line, it kind of picked one side, uh, it kind of 
didn't do it symmetrically. It, it kind of basically did what you told it to, which is to slice one side and then the other. So what I'm going to do is geometry, modify topology, just do a quick mirror and weld across the x-axis, make those both the same, and then go in here to BPL for our planar brush here. And then I'm just going to pick a plane that I like, and then I'm just going to push straight across here. And then same thing here. I'm going to pick a plane that I like and just push straight across. I'm just going to go through and do a little quick cleanup pass, you know, on these big, broad, flat surfaces here. So just again, picking a plane that I like and then just using that planar brush to kind of go through and clean up these interior edges. You don't have to if it's not going to be a huge deal to you, but that's just a quick way to kind of do a little cleanup pass on those inside uh, areas here. So now uh, we've done that. We've gone through, we've sliced uh, out the shapes that we want. And now, if I, again, if I go out of solo mode here, you're going to see not only is this light weighted, but also I've done some light weighting on the outside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut in some Boolean uh, shapes here, again, using the knife brush. So I'm going to go into solo mode. Uh, we have poly groups the same on both sides. I'm going to hold on. Uh, well, let's go up here first. We're going to take this, duplicate it off, hold down control shift, isolate just these poly groups on both sides. I'm going to go down here to Geometry, Modify Topology, and then we're going to do a quick Delete Hidden. And then you know what? Uh, I just need one side. So we've done this before. I just hold down Control Shift, uh, start dragging out, tap Control to switch it temporarily to visibility. Just grab a few polygons over here, Control Shift A. Got to turn off X Symmetry first, so tap X on your keyboard. Control Shift, tap Control, grab a few polygons over here, Control Shift A. Again, Geometry Modified Topology. Uh, delete hidden, and I'm just going to work on this one side over here. So if we go through here, let's go ahead and make sure we have our original turned on. And you know what? I just want to look at these two. Hold down shift, turn off the eyeball for this piece here, and then we'll turn on the eyeball for this. So now we have, here's our original piece. Here's the little panel we basically uh, broke off from our original piece here. And I'm going to use this as a basis for booleaning, booleaning shapes in from the side. I guess suppose one way to do this, uh, you know what you could do, you could go in here BZM for the Z Modeler brush, hover over a face, Q mesh, polygroup all, go ahead and take that face and pull it out and give it some thickness. You can also go in here to Geometry Dynamic, turn this on, crank up the thickness, so this is like fake thickness, let's take Smooth Subdiv down to zero, um, so you can actually like just put in a dynamic thickness. Um, and in fact, if I want this dynamic thickness to not go from the middle out, I want to say, you know what, I want to do the offset. If you do an offset of negative 100, it's going to keep your original surface and do any thickness towards the inside in the middle. If you do the opposite at 100, it's going to keep your original surface and then it's only going to apply that thickness outwards. Uh, so we'll use that. And so that's another way you can introduce um, some dynamic thickness. And again, it's dynamic, so I can turn that off and it just disappears. Uh, but if you want it for real, you can just click apply and now you have an actual thickness to that surface. Now, you know, again, if I go, uh, if we looked at the other light weighting, uh, it didn't, it wasn't touching the border. It was actually pushed in a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, you know, BZM for a Z modeler brush, hover over this face. Um, we're gonna hold down spacebar, Q mesh, polygroup ball, uh, and then as we Q-mesh this in, you can Q-mesh it in and it'll actually go in one, what, what I'm looking for, what's the word I'm looking for, one edge ring around the object here, but it might kind of flub on some edges here. What I'm really going to do is I'm going to start Q-meshing in, but instead of Q-meshing and snapping it to the next inner, um, inner ring, I'm going to hold down shift and just push along that surface normal until I get to the thickness radius that I want. So here's our original surface. There's our new thickness radius. So I'm going to use this as a starting point for how embedded I want my uh, Boolean. Now, I don't need these other surfaces in here. So what I'm going to do is hold down control shift, go in here to select lasso. And if I just click this edge here, that's going to get that entire edge ring, well, most of that entire edge ring, um, through here, control shift drag, and we'll control shift tap here. So basically what I'm looking for is just, just only this entire edge ring. Um, in fact, if you want to go in here to like select rectangle, select this edge ring here, and then this poly group, and then control shift tap that poly group, you'll get the same result. So we'll go in here, we'll say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, and again, if we go out of solely mode, I'm basically giving myself a boundary uh, around there. Um, now I do need to boolean a shape out. So again, I'm gonna with Z model brush B Z M. We're gonna hover over an edge. We're gonna do close concave hole. Or in this instance, we could actually 
two birds, one stone, geometry, modified topology, just run a close holes operation and that'll go ahead and fill in this hole here. Now, again, I'm a sucker for clean geometry and I know zero mesh is easy to use. So again, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh, and that'll go ahead and give me uh, a little bit better geometry. Let's go ahead and say in half. There we go. And you know what? I want to make sure polygroup polyloop that this was a separate polygroup. It, it was a little bit, uh, the, the colors were very, very similar. So again, a BZ, Z modeler, BZM, hover over an edge, polygroup polyloop, tap that edge. And again, you can keep cycling through polygroups if you want to, just tapping Alt. And now you have interior, exterior, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. We'll do same Ziri mesh. That'll uh, give us a nice new geometry here. Oh, you know what? We have a little bit of overlap. Let's hover over an edge. Let's go ahead and say close convex hole. So if you didn't know what I was doing, we basically just went undid back to where we just had the original loop, hover over an edge with our Z modeler brush. And instead of a concave hole or a closed hole, let's do close convex hole. And we'll just go ahead and close the geometry on both sides. Uh, we'll hold down control shift, hit control W, and now we have geometry. But again, you know, this isn't great geometry to slice through. So again, keep groups. Uh, same zero measure, and now we got nice geometry. Let's go double. There we go. Nice clean geometry all the way through. And now we're ready to go ahead and slice in our shapes. Now this is going to be uh, the easy part. So hold down Control Shift, go back to Knife Curve, and like we did in the knife demo, if we hold down Control Shift and we uh, start slicing through, and again we can tap Alt to make a sharp curve, or tap Alt tap Alt twice to make a sharp curve, Alt once to make a, a bendy curve. That'll go through and slice the geometry. Again, one more thing I forgot to do. Control Shift to select the knife curve, space bar, turn on brush radius. And again, if we Alt tap twice through, that'll leave a brush radius behind. If we want to do the opposite, hold down Control Shift, um, slice, Alt tap twice to make a sharp curve, then hold down Alt before we let go. That'll cut through and leave that uh, behind. So now we have two separate islands here. So now that we have this, we can go through and now I can just hold down control shift and then I'm not going to go all the way through. I can, I can hold down alt and cut all the way through if I want to, but I can also stop right at this border, hold down alt and again, just apply my light weighting just to these uh, specific areas. And if that doesn't work, I just, you know, undo and like, you know, you know what, that'll probably be fine. I'll go in from this angle, hold down alt, go in from this angle, we'll hold down alt and then through here, we'll just do like a, a W like so. Oops. There we go. So this is our uh, light weighting here. Now again, I can just go ahead and Boolean this out. So here's our original mesh sitting here. Here's our new mesh. If I set this to subtractive, go up here to live Boolean, turn that on. Let's turn off polyframe. Let's hit W and we can move this in. We can just kind of cut that geometry in, but there's more we can do here. So let's undo that. Let's turn off live Boolean. Let's turn on our polyframe. Again, while we were slicing through, it was giving us new polygroups and we can use that to our advantage. So let's go over here to geometry, zero measure. We'll say keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Our group edges are already smooth. We'll do same and then we'll hit zero mesh. Nice new geometry, should be pretty predictable. If it's if there's some areas that are a little bit twisted, you can try adding more geometry like double and that'll sometimes fix it. And it's mostly fixed. The only, the only minor problem we have is like down here in this corner. And we can actually fix this pretty, pretty quickly. BZM, I'm going to go through here and we're going to say collapse edge. I'm just going to collapse these edges back. Boom, there we go. And in fact, if you see, if you notice that like one side is good and the other side isn't, if you want it to be the same on both sides, again, you can go in here to geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. Now, if I do a mirror and weld across the X, that's going to be across the world axis. However, if I turn on LSIM, that's the local bounding box axis of bounding box axis of just this object, do a quick mirror and weld across the X that will mirror this side over to this side. Although now that I say that, um, I'm actually backwards. So Z is forward here. So I actually, what I need to do, that's actually good deformation. First Well, deformation mirror across the X, and then we'll do a geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X, and then we'll do our deformation mirror across the X again. So that took our good side, mirrored it over uh, to our not so good side. So we'll go back out of solo mode. Now we have more predictable geometry. And like we did in an earlier demo, since we have polygroup borders in here, 
if I go down here to our geometry crease menu and I say bevel width and I hold down control, before, if I do a bevel width now, it's gonna look for creases. If I hold down control, it's gonna look for polygroup borders. So I can hold down control and bevel out and it'll actually put a bevel in between all of our polygroups. So what that's gonna do, if I go out of solo mode here, turn off polyframe, um, hit W, and then uh, we already have this set to subtractive. So again, here's additive, subtractive, union. So hit subtractive, go over here to live Boolean, push this in so it's gonna slice through and it's a live Boolean so you can make changes on the fly. And in fact, within while you're in Boolean mode, come down here, hold down control, start putting in those bevels and now you can see how those bevels will look while it's Booleaned out. And again, you can just put update these on the fly. If you want this object on both sides, let's go ahead and turn off local symmetry. So we're looking at the, again, the world axis, which is right here in the middle. And then we'll just do a quick geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the X. And then you'll see, okay, if we go into solo mode here. It just mirrored all of this Boolean geometry over to the other side. It's updating on the fly. So now we have our original mesh here, our Boolean mesh here. And if we want to apply this Boolean, all you got to do is go over here to our sub tool. And these are the only two we have visible. Um, if you want to make sure you can turn off the folder for structure two, but since we hit shift, turned everything off and then touch the uh, eyeballs back on for the objects here, we're pretty safe. Um, so with just these two visible, we can go down here to Boolean, uh, make Boolean mesh. If you have dynamic subdivisions on, like if you hit D for dynamic and have a smooth results, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. So for this one here, if we go into solo mode, turn on polyframe, you're gonna see it's pretty low res. Let's go down here to geometry, crease, and just take this crease tolerance, set to 45, just go ahead and hit crease, and you know, let's lower that. So we can make sure we get all those corners. And in fact, if you wanna crease between all the polygroups, just to make sure it does it, hit crease PG. And then now if I hit, go into solo mode and hit D for dynamic, say yes, you're gonna see, well, first of all, it's gonna add thickness because we left that on, so underneath dynamic, Take thickness down to zero, and then your smooth subdiv up to two, which should be the default. And now it's gonna look at your geometry and it's gonna give you nice smooth geometry between here. Now, when you did your creasing, it may have grabbed too many angles. Um, that's easy enough to fix. You can manually go through here with your Z model brush, B, Z, M, and you can say hover over an edge and you can say, you know, crease, edge loop complete, hold down alt, and then just uncrease things, or in this case, probably crease, edge loop partial, hold down alt will do the trick like so, um, or you can just go in here to your crease menu, uncrease all, just raise the crease tolerance slightly and just see if you can dial in, you know, where that tolerance is. And you can also just do crease PG. So that'll kind of get the corners and crease your object here. So that has creasing on. So it's shift D turns dynamic off, D turns it on. We can alt tap this big original piece of geometry here. Same deal, let's say crease poly group. Let's go ahead and hit D for dynamic. This one, we don't have to turn thickness off. We never turned it on for the sub tool. So there we go. We got a nice creased result. It, uh, we hit dynamic, which does a smooth subdiv of two preview. So again, shift D to turn that off, D to turn it on. And if we want the smooth result on our Boolean, all we have to do is go back up here to sub tool. These are the only two showing. Boolean, dynamic subdivision on because we have it on. Make Boolean mesh, that'll go through and process this. So now we have a union mesh or a U mesh out here in our subtool palette. And this is the result of that union mesh. And because you have polygroups, you can go through here and you can Z remesh this result if you want to, or you know, dynamesh it, whatever you want to do to this. But now if we go back here, we can say, okay, let's append that U mesh result. We don't need our original meshes anymore. So we'll just say delete, okay, delete. And now if I hold down shift, or you know what, let's just turn on our structure back on. Um, we'll go into the folder and turn the eyeballs back on. There we go. Hold down shift and turn the eyeballs back on. Now we have uh, another iron lightweighted structure that matches. I mean, it doesn't match great because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have these open so I could see, you know, exactly these thicknesses, but you get the idea. I go through here and create, you know, the overall shape use your brush radius, use the knife brush, use zero mesh or use booleans uh, to very quickly create, you know, these, these uh, kind of complex lightweighted uh, piece of structural geometry.